In this video, I'm gonna take these two clips and turn it into this awesome transition. Now to create this effect, you're gonna need two clips. Now the first clip that I've sourced here is this one here of the girl opening up the blinds. And then the second one is this FPV shot here going across the field. Two things I looked for when picking out these clips was I was trying to match the tone. So both were kind of shot in this afternoon uh, sunset sort of light. So I, I tried to pick two that were already matching like that. The second thing is I was trying to pick two that kind of match the, the direction of the camera. So this second shot, the FPV shot is moving forward. So I know that when I'm gonna transition through the window, I want that camera to be moving continuously forward. So I'm trying to match that motion to the FPV. Now you can go out and film your own clips, but the clips that I sourced, I went and downloaded from Envato Elements because they have tons of these stock video clips and you can download and use them using their very simple license. Now, personally, I've been using Envato Elements now for quite some time. You know, to have to go out and film these clips would cost me a lot of time. So to just be able to download them really quickly and use them in my project is an absolute time saver. The other great advantage with using Envato Elements is you get access to all of these different categories, also included under your unlimited download license. Now, if you're also interested and check out Envato Elements for yourself, then there'll be a link down in the description below and that'll get you 50% off when you sign up to an annual subscription. Now, the first thing I did here was just create a new camera. Then I can make both of these layers 3D. I'm going to basically come in down here, create a position and a point of interest, maybe start the camera movement a bit back here. And once I get to about here, I'm just using C to control my camera here. I'm going to start moving my clip or moving into my clip here till I get to about there. The other thing I'm also going to do is I'm also going to add a bit of Z rotation. So I'm just going to create a keyframe there. And when we get to about here, I'm just going to start creating a bit of Z camera rotation and I'm just going to move this. So we're on the edge of that clip. Now we can go through and adjust that in just a minute. One other thing I can add to both of these clips is a motion tile. That's gonna help hide those edges of that clip. I can mirror that clip as well. So we've kind of got our movement here. Now we wanna start removing that background. So when we get to here, I'm gonna use the keying and then the extract tool. Then as I get to about here, I want to start removing the edge of that screen. And the other thing I'm going to do is also just add a little bit of softness. So I've got something that looks like this at the moment. So as I'm zooming through, we're kind of removing that background part. The other thing is the background image is now too big. So I'm just gonna drop the scale down and move this slightly over and I'm also gonna rotate this back to roughly center here. Scale this down. So we kind of get that action of it moving like that. The other thing I'm also gonna do, if I hit S on my keyboard, I'm gonna create a scale keyframe and also scale this up. So we kind of get that movement to counteract the movement of when we're zooming in with the camera. Once we get to about here, I can bring the end of that clipping because we don't need that anymore. And now we've kind of got that movement. What I can do with all of these is now right click, make them easy ease. And with these, what I can do is come into the graph editor and now start dragging these out to smooth out that overall transition. So we want it to kind of start a bit smooth and then kind of speed ramp into that transition till we end up with something looking like that. So that's looking quite good. Now, if you're following along with this tutorial and you wanna make more of these video effects, then I have a course called Motion Effects Pro and it's gonna walk you right through from the very basics of how to use After Effects 
right through on how to create some awesome looking video effects all inside of After Effects. Now, the best part is I'm gonna teach you After Effects to the point that you'll be able to rely less on tutorials in order to make your own effects. So it's really teaching you about that creative process of how you would take clips or the clips that you filmed come up with video effects and then how to actually make those all inside of After Effects. Now, again, if you're interested in that, then there'll be a link down in the description below. So I'm gonna take all of those layers and then I'm gonna come up to layer down to pre-compose. And then I'm gonna right click and create a new adjustment layer. Now, what I did to this was I added a radial fast blur and I also added the curves. You can search for both of those up here and then drag them in. Now the curves simply just adds a bit of contrast to your image. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it to basically you know, add a lot of contrast. We really wanna blow out those highlights. And then I'm using the CC Radial Fast Blur. And what I've done here, I've added around 95 to that image. And I've off-centered that position to be somewhere in line with that point that we're zooming through. What this does is it gives those sort of that volumetric lighting, so the light rays sort of shining through, and it, and it makes a really nice transition. What I also did to that was I changed the opacity by hitting T on the keyboard, and I created a, a scale keyframe to turn it on and off. So if you leave it on all the time, then you get this volumetric lighting effect. Whereas here, what it does is it slowly comes on over time and then fades off. So we get a really nice fade transition. It just makes the effect so much better. So that's pretty much how I made that particular effect. One other thing I also did was also add a bit of a turbulent displace to kind of give it that effect like it's going through the window. So what I did first was I created a solid and I added a fractal noise to this. Now these are all the settings that I use to create my fractal noise. I want to show you step by step all the things that I changed here. Just enter in those numbers there to get where to get something that looks like this. What I then did was I created an evolution. So I created a keyframe for the evolution. I started at zero and then transitioned up to around 300. So that basically gets the, the fractal noise to move. And then I also transitioned the scale. So about halfway through, I, I scaled it from about 144 up into about one or down to 128 and then back to 144 again. So we kind of get this, this scaling transition. Now this is all gonna make sense if I just turn off that layer. To my layer underneath, I'm now going to add a displacement map and I'm going to set this to be that layer, the fractal noise. I can set these both to be luminance and you'll see that as I scale this up, we're now getting, a, we're now affecting the layer underneath. The other thing I also did was add a motion tile which sits over the top just to hide those edges. And you can scale this effect on and off by creating keyframes and scaling this down to zero. So as the effect fades on, I then want it to fade on and then off. So we kind of get this effect like it's flying through the window. Now these are all the settings that I used here in the original one. So these are all the, uh, basically the keyframe placements that I used. So if you want to follow along and set them to be exactly the same, then that's what you can use here. You can use this as a reference. All the settings that I've showed you are exactly the same. It's just the keyframe placements here. You basically just want to try and match it as best you can, but it basically just gets that nice effect as we're flying through. One other thing you can also do to finish the whole effect is also add a CC force motion blur, but I would do that at the very end because it tends to slow down your computer a lot. So wait till you to the final render and then add that effect on over the top. Now, once you've done all of that, you'll end up with an effect that looks like this. And that's how you take two different clips and combine them together to create a really cool transition. Now, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.